we would like to invite on the stage our panelists. So first I will start with Eric Sinhoi, a Sumano project partner, and he comes from Research Institutes of Finland. Please, Eric. Sweden. Mm. Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. You know. <laughs> Not everything can be perfect. <laughs> then we are having Jana Moldanova from the Sea Sheep platform, who is coming from the Swedish Environmental Research Institute. Yes, please. Yeah. Then our policy and business representatives. So first, Dominic Litfas from the Helcom Secretariat. and Bogdan Oldakovsky from the Baltic Ports Organization. Yeah. So let's start, and mm -hmm. let's start with the platforms. In uh, one, two sentences, uh, could you give an example of the practical outcome of the platform? What will be delivered by the end? Yeah, mm -hmm. Jan, Eric. Yes, please. <laughs> Hello. The, 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 the practical outcomes of the project, um, of the platform, uh, I guess Sumino is a perfect example of what, what you talked about, the idea. All of our projects are about improving nutrient use mm -hmm. and manure management in agriculture, and each project has one specific focus. And uh, a big problem that we've had is gathering a, an audience of policymakers and authorities to, to deliver our results to with these one particular focus. Mm -hmm. So in Sumanu, we have now a whole portfolio of solutions that can be applied to different areas and that have different needs, and hopefully it will be much easier to, to, to gather the audiences of these policymakers and authorities with this bigger platform and can, can continue pushing the results of, of all of our projects. So that's that's hopefully we'll be able to, to, to more effectively drive changes in policy. Yeah, okay, Jana, and the practical outcome of the Sea Ship yeah. platform. In, uh, in Sea Ship we have two kinds of, two types of projects. There is one type which is uh, focusing on environmental impacts of shipping and on holistic assessment of, of, of the impacts. And then we have uh, another part which is more working with this business potential of, of this environmental technologies. And I see the, the practical and, uh, examples of inputs. One is, one is uh, coming, uh, one is, um, let's say, uh, preliminary uh, environmental policy recommendations, which will be submitted to the Helcom Maritime, uh, Helcom Maritime Group. Uh, and the second is uh, recommendations or best practices for uh, financing of the environmental technologies in shipping. Yeah, yeah, good. So you already mentioned that from your perspective you think it's useful and relevant to synthesize those uh, outputs, but do you have some examples from your projects how, uh, and from your platforms how actually you work with policymakers to Eric and with businesses to Jana? So let's start with Eric and Sumano. Practical examples of mm. how we work with policymakers. From from the projects we've, uh, in most of our projects we've 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 tried to, from the very beginning, establish contact with relevant policymakers. And we've two of our projects are flagship uh, projects, uh, so we have had a lot of contact with the the, the policy area, Nutri and policy era or policy area bioeconomy in actually both of them. Um, and, 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 but but the, the problem with the projects is, is that we get to the results at the very end, so we have very little time to interact with the policymakers. So hopefully in Sumanu, in the platform, we, we've already established this contact and we've had, uh, we had a joint co co collaboration with uh, policy area bioeconomy to, to do a, a knowledge exchange day in Finland in, in, in February where we presented um, a lot of the results from our projects and, and had many different authorities and policymakers gathered and researchers and, and other stakeholders. So hopefully this is what we plan to try to continue doing um, to, 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 to use these connections. Yeah. Pathway to the sustainable shipping is very complex and uh, 
what we how we work in a, in a sea ship uh, it's very much uh, trying to synthesize uh, because we have a lot of a lot of projects which are working with uh, with different issues and uh, which have developed this uh, this assessment during a longer time so what what we are working is to trying to synthesize and get give, give clear indications and clear analysis of of the, f the first, what the, what the impacts are, the complexity of them, and the second is what these different, uh, the, both the policies and, and the technologies, what, what impact you can expect. Uh, so I think this, our, our approach is uh, in one way to policy makers, but often the industry is actually represented in this grouping <laughs> as well through associations, and, and this is maybe the, the durable part of the of this collaboration because we can we can somehow use uh, utilize the the contacts we have made throughout the projects and uh, i mean we have uh, we have indicated that also how the platform began that we have indicated some synergies between the projects already during mm -hmm. the uh, before the platform was built so this is now we have really possibility to to work together and to to sort of uh, go further in this in this analysis <laughs> and there are importantly there are businesses already involved in some of the projects especially in the technical parts so i think they can really draw uh, draw uh, use of the of these uh, results and also the other way around in the, in the when we develop our our synthesis or our um, assessment for policymakers we can of course have a use of, of all these uh, rather technical parts of the projects where we can assess the assess the impacts directly with the, with the framework we have developed yeah good thank you so we heard now the uh, platform perspective but then let's mm. Marta go to our stakeholders okay. Okay, then we really would be very curious to kind of get a better understanding of, uh, of the counterparts from the policy, uh, policy level for business level. What are your needs? But before we go to that, I think it would be fair enough to just get a short uh, one, two sentences introduction about uh, both of your institutions. Uh, perhaps we would start with Dominic, uh, two sentences about. Good morning, uh, everybody. Mm -hmm. So, um, I am, from, uh, I am from Helcom, um, my name is Dominic Litfors, I'm standing in for uh, Monika Stankiewicz. And um, Helcom is short for uh, the Helsinki Commission, which is even shorter for the Baltic Marine Environmental Protection mm -hmm. Commission. And I guess now everybody uh, would understand why we prefer to use Helcom. <laughs> but as the name also says, um, Helcom works uh, towards the environmental protection of the, the Baltic Sea. Um, Helcom is based on a treaty, a convention, which is called the, the, Helsinki, uh, the Helsinki Convention. And there are ten signatory parties to this convention. It's the nine Baltic Sea countries um, plus uh, the European Union. Um, why is this important and uh, how does this link to, to, um, to, to the platform work? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, one, one of the articles, um, one of the principles in the convention states that the signatories um, are obliged to utilize best uh, available technologies and best uh, environmental practices. And it is platforms like Sumanu, mm -hmm. like, uh, like Clean, like, like Seaship, mm -hmm. uh, or BSR Water, that's the three platforms that Helcom is involved in. They bring these best available technologies to our attention, mm -hmm. to Helcom's attention, and then also to the attention to uh, the member oh. states. Um, Furthermore, mm -hmm. um, Helcom is also currently um, embarked in um, updating um, the Baltic Sea Action Plan, um, which is a key uh, tool for, for, for Helcom work. The Baltic Sea Action Plan mm -hmm. is um, the program of measures to achieve a healthy Baltic Sea. Um, and the initial plan will end in uh, 2021, but it is already clear that um, the ecological objectives of the plan won't be uh, attained. The Baltic Sea is in a very poor state, um, we can say it, uh, there is no denying that, and the objectives won't be attained in 2021. This is why the um, ministers um, of the HELCOM members already agreed in 2018 that um, the Baltic Sea Action Plan will be updated past 2021. 
and the results of the platforms uh, mm -hmm. will feed this updating process. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that we could continue on that line and if you could just to illustrate a bit for us because it's, um, uh, we understand the main process that is going on but could you bring some practical example actually what can you get specifically out of the platform that would help in your, in your work and in updating of the... Yes. Um, well, before I go into the, the Baltic Sea Action Plan mm -hmm. um, we already had, um, you mentioned already, um, the work between SeaShip and, the, and Helcom, and like one of the, the, the outcomes of SeaShip will be um, the, the, um, the drafting of a draft, uh, draft resolution, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Helcom draft resolution that will um, first enter a, a Helcom working group, and then work all its way up um, until it is uh, approved by the HELCOM members uh, as a recommendation. So this is a very concrete uh, output of uh, platform work. Um, then a little bit, well, first in the future, um, in regards to uh, the Baltic Sea uh, Action Plan, there will be a series uh, of workshops um, that, that will feed um, the catalog of potential uh, measures uh, that will be included in the Baltic Sea Action Plan. So this is all work in process, and um, it is a huge task, so we need the input from the experts. We need to base this plan on strong um, scientific underpinnings. We need to know what are the best available, available uh, technologies, what are best environmental practices. Oh, sorry for that. Um, but these are concrete examples of how the work of platforms feed into, uh, into Helcom work. Mm -hmm. And then the, the outcome will be um, um, an updated Baltic Sea action plan. Um, for Sumanu, um, there is also um, currently um, the same ministers that <laughs> agreed to update the Baltic Sea action plan. At the same meeting uh, in 2018, also agreed to develop uh, a regional strategy uh, on uh, nutrient recycling for, for, for the Baltic Sea. Mm -hmm. And this is key because one of, the key, one of the major pressures on the Baltic Sea is eutrophication. Mm -hmm. And uh, with almost uh, the entire sea affected by eutrophication, it's um, about 90, 97%. So it's quite dire and there is really need for action on that. Mm -hmm. So the results from Sumanu. Um, will feed into uh, this nutrient recycling uh, strategy as well. Thank you very much indeed. We uh, would now, uh, I would ask Bogdan to do exactly the same, to shortly introduce um, uh, your organization, the focus of your organization, and then perhaps also already reflect on uh, how you cooperate with the platform, or if it's yet too early, how you intend to cooperate with platform, what is most useful about the platform work in your area? Yes, well, first of all, thank you for inviting uh, me here and, and inviting Baltic Ports. And maybe I would start that uh, the, the first part of the panel was very interesting to, to, to learn what uh, the platforms are really for, and for me it, very, it was very new and very informative, so thank you for this uh, kind uh, introduction. When it comes to Baltic Ports Organization, we are the association of the ports around the Baltic. We are having uh, the members from all countries, including Lübeck, mm -hmm. and including Kiel, Rostock, and uh, Wismar, and other uh, German ports. And uh, for some last years, we have been uh, following the development uh, when it comes to new regulations uh, that regulate the maritime transport uh, in the Baltic. And of course those regulations have a huge impact on, on, uh, on, the, on the market, on the, on the business. So uh, there were uh, lots of uh, talks uh, how, for example, SECA regulations would impact maritime transport. And now I'm coming to the point. Uh, uh, what is useful uh, in these platforms that they all they take uh, results from many um, many projects and they uh, try kind of conclude and and comes to some important messages for for the business sector. Mm -hmm. So, for example, when it comes to implication of SECA, we can learn that the, there was not too much of the model shift uh, from uh, maritime to to land transport. 
uh, we learned also what was the real uh, reduction of the emissions, uh, what was the implication for technology part. So I think those kind of uh, uh, messages, integrated messages, uh, uh, are very important for the, um, for the business partners. And when I looked at the project level and the platform level, I think the projects are more for, for the single operators. And if they see the, the, um, the real um, benefit being a part of the, of the project, and if they can get, for example, some uh, uh, solutions for, for their challenge, their problem, of course they are willing to, to be a, a part of the, uh, of the projects. But when it comes to the platforms, I think it's more for, for business associations. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one level up. So I don't think that the single operators, business mm -hmm. operators, they are very much interested in, 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 in that kind of, of uh, outcomes. It's more for, uh, for um, associations like us. Mm -hmm. And then when we receive uh, these messages, then we can transmit them uh, to, to our members. Mm -hmm. So that's how I can see the role of the, of the single uh, mm -hmm. project partners and, and uh, the, the organization as us at the platform level. Actually, this is a very interesting aspect because I wanted to uh, actually ask is it more for businesses or is it is single businesses or, or intermediaries, this type of a cooperation. But now I understand that actually um, you can, uh, uh, with a program like ours, you could work on both levels having these different types of projects. Di creating solutions directly for businesses and also for intermediary organizations like, like yours. So thank you very much for those contributions. Perhaps we will come back, Jelena, a bit to the platform perspective. Yeah, so let's get back to the platforms and your work. So you briefly explained, Eric, how you worked, uh, how you are working, uh, with policymakers, including policy area coordinators, Bioeconomy and Nutria. But could you please share what is actually the role of those coordinators in your platform and how did you set up the cooperation with them? Uh, the, the role of the actual coordinators, um, uh, we, we have them as associate partners in, in, in the project and, and our role is, is to have continual feedback and, and, and working with them to set up uh, platforms of disseminating uh, results and 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 everything. Uh, we also have um, Helcom is a, is a actual member partner of the project, and and this was this this will hopefully also give us an extra foothold of of uh, contact with policymakers around the whole region, and not just the 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 policy area coordinators. Um, and and. Uh, uh, so, so we work very closely throughout the throughout the the, the project and and throughout the platform and uh, and and hopefully this this role will be able to grow. Also, we're in the very beginning stages of of the platforms and and one one difficulty with the platforms that that we felt um, and now I have the chance to say this <laughs> is 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 many of the projects are still going when the platforms start and 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 the, the the projects are just coming to their to their their final point of gathering results and that's that's when everything is happening in the project so it's it's been a bit of a challenge to 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 focus on the platforms when we're still trying to round up the the projects um, so but but now as as the, the platforms are or the, or the projects are coming to an end and the, the platforms will take more shape and and, and we'll be able to work with them more. Yeah, yeah. but it's also a very good comment uh, how to set up further work with platforms. This is not the only platforms that we're now having in the program. In the program. Then I would go to Jana. Uh, you mentioned quite clearly that for your work, uh, policy level is also very important. Businesses, yes, but policy level is very important. And we know that in the EU strategy for the Baltic Sea region, there is a uh, very special policy area designated to shipping. How did you set up cooperation with them, if you have any? Or? Yeah, I think we had uh, close collaboration with policy area in several of the projects, which were flagship or are or were flagship projects of the policy area. So in, in this sense, uh, I would say that the policy area coordinators actually uh, initiated the, the whole uh, 
platform from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Then we took our own initiative and went forward. Now they are associated partner. Um, and uh, we had very good use of the, it was like an information platform for us, uh, learning about the different tools mm -hmm. and also getting in contact with, uh, with the International Steering Committee, which invol involves many policy stakeholders of the Baltic Sea region. Uh, mm -hmm. We didn't, I would say that the, uh, as it's called policy area coordinators, so maybe at least from the project, not from the platform, from, from the project, uh, we couldn't see the, the very very direct connection to to the policy makers on the European level. However, there were uh, they are also present or observers in in the steering committee. Um, so, I would say that the the policy area coordinators were still quite central, and I think in the in the continuation of the of the platform, they will mm -hmm. certainly take role in uh, promoting the results of uh, of. Um, Sea ship platform to the European level policy. Yeah. Good. Uh, but I would like to pick up on the comment that Eric just gave about the uh, projects that are still running and then the forming of the platform. Jan, in your platform, you have projects from different calls. Do did you have any experiences if it's useful to start the platform when the projects are already over, or still to have them running in parallel? Uh, we have. Uh, all kinds of projects. Some of them are running still several years. The project I am representing, Bonus Shiba, is already finalized. And uh, especially for this metro projects, this is a brilliant opportunity to relay because in the project you focus on uh, concrete results. So this is really opportunity for us to synthesize the results of the different projects and make, and also to, to sort of take together all the stakeholder groups which we have, uh, which we have met during the project. And we have also, of course, also identified questions which the stakeholders were interested in during the projects. So, so this, is, this is really a very nice opportunity for us to take these results, this work with stakeholders further in the platform and to, to, really, to, to really deliver concrete solutions on, this, on, on, the pro, on the questions which the stakeholders raise during the project. Um, and of course, uh, I hope that we can feed into the projects which are still running so they can have benefit of, of this uh, synthesis. And, of course, we can use, as the results are evolving in these projects, we can use them in, in this synthesis mm -hmm. as well, of course. So I think this is very beneficial for, for the projects. Yeah, so you know, yeah, it's, it's yeah. good to hear that it's both ways cooperation goes on. Eric, would you confirm this, or it was a more challenging to also to fit from the platform to the project? Uh, I would I would definitely confirm it's 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 both of, of course there there are challenges in any way you set up but there's 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 positive and negative aspects of any way you do something um, and and one of the big positive things is is that it, it it brings this platform where we have the projects have very more or less specific approaches to solving the solution and the platforms bring these bring these together and and it gives us a, a greater possibility of of, of of uh, disseminating our ideas, and, and um, so that's 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 very very positive, um, I think, and yeah. will be in the future too. So, Eric, while you are still uh, having the microphone, I would address my last question to you. Mm -hmm. uh, the platform have just started, but we are always thinking, okay, then what's next? Have you started these discussions with your partners? What is the necessary next step to take in your field? after the platform is completed and through transnational cooperation? We haven't started that discussion yet. No. Um, actually, right now we're, we're in the process of synthesizing the results and trying to put together our main recommendations. And in that work, we will, we will clearly see mm -hmm. where, where the next move is. And, and the, the partnerships in, in, our, in our platform and in our projects are mostly not new pro partnerships. We've been we've been collaborating with the Farmers Parliament for years. We've been collaborating with Luke in Finland and with many of our other partners for many many years and other projects. And and the, the platform 
our platform is not only using these projects, but previous projects, previous interreg projects that have been working with manure-related issues, and trying to to bring back those results also, and 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 bring keep keep them going forward also. So I I'm convinced that we will we will continue this in the future also. So you will come up with some ideas, Jan. And, and what about sea ship? Is it anything still for the future, or did you already have some ideas? What is the next step? Um, I think in in terms of uh, scientific collaboration, this is of course this is also. Uh, many partners which have been collaborating with each other previously and, and then we will work further on, on uh, developing another projects. Um, I think in terms of especially this uh, synthesis and, and assessment framework which is trans, trans, uh, trans, uh, sort of transferred to policy making. Uh, here I see very important part is uh, that uh, the groups in the sea ships uh, are becoming involved in expert groups and in uh, in um, working groups of the HELCOM process and the Baltic Sea Action Plan update, and also on the EU level that uh, that uh, the that members of the platform are involved in in the task groups, uh, both for the for the air quality for the LERTAP convention mm -hmm. and also in the European uh, Sustainable Shipping Forum. So I, I, and also that the, actually the results, the, the, the framework itself, the assessment of, of the shipping is, is somehow trans, transferred to these uh, expert groups because I think this is really the durable mm -hmm. uh, structure which can, which can continue feeding into, into these uh, policy areas. And as we have been discussing, that it is important that the associations, the business associations, are really connected to these expert groups, which is also the case, as I talked to Bogdan, who are associated, for instance, to European Marita, uh, Sustainable mm -hmm. Shipping Forum. I believe that Helcom is as well. Uh, yeah. I would say as well. Yes. Oh. yes. Ah, good. Yeah, thank you a lot, Jana. So, uh, as, we, as we can see, yeah. uh, uh, you are going also beyond your partnerships and introducing your knowledge to networks, uh, yeah, to, not to networks of your partners, but something that is very separate from the also pr platform processes, mm -hmm. which is very good to see. But then let's back to the, uh, mm -hmm. to the businesses and policy level. Um, I can only agree uh, that uh, we, as the business association, we have to be... Um, at, at the level when the, 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 the um, set of projects are presented. And I think uh, one of the role of the platform is also come to some policy recommendations. And when it comes to poli policy recommendations, we must be there because we would like to also react to what you propose. Mm -hmm. uh, very often we, we see that there are some policies or recommendations or even regulations that we think are not consulted enough with, with the industry. So uh, I think that's one of the role that uh, we have to play in, in, in this process. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, what Bogdan just said is, mm -hmm. uh, is very important to, to involve um, stakeholders in the process uh, in its entirety. And, um, you know, when it comes to Helcom, um, we produce recommendations, and they are just that, they are recommendations. They are not uh, legally binding. So the success of a recommendation uh, will depend on, on you know, how, how it will be implemented by, by the stakeholders. And one of the means to ensure that it's implemented is that um, all stakeholders have a certain you know, ownership of the process. Um, when you know, when stakeholders are involved, they are more likely to to implement uh, the the recommendations, and this is really key. Mm -hmm. When um, you you mentioned um, processes, complex processes, I was just wondering if you, from your perspective, would you have any kind of ideas for improvement of this cooperation with platforms? Because um, Elena a bit uh, kind of uh, talked about, um, uh, with our guest, about the challenges that platforms are facing. But perhaps the setup of platforms is also causing certain challenges for your organization. Or we would like to see certain elements being structured 
different. So, um, uh, are there any? Uh, is there any scope for improving the instrument or cooperation? Um, to be honest, mm -hmm. um, I I wouldn't really know because um, we are that uh, we are the receiving line of mm -hmm. of uh, the the outputs of, mm -hmm. of the platforms, and uh, we are actually still waiting for mm -hmm. uh, well for for our meat mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, to, to cut mm -hmm. in, basically, mm -hmm. if I may say so. So it is the early stages. But so I will I'm come back with this question in two, three years <laughs> to you, and we will, yes. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we will write an article uh, about it. Nevertheless, uh, um, uh, what is important for Helcom is that um, whatever comes out of the platforms um, is geared towards implementability by, mm -hmm. um, by, by policy, and that is maybe something that the platforms should have in mind that when they, you know, when it comes to the outputs, that okay, how is it implementable by 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 policy? How how feasible is our outputs? Mm -hmm. I understood that Bogdan, you had some kind of comment on this one. Yes, uh, I think we agreed that uh, we we should uh, uh, we should together try to, to to get more business representatives at at the at the level of platforms. And I think it's not that easy, because if you look at, at the Baltic, there are lots of uh, cooperation between public or NGOs, but not that many in, in, in the business sector. Um, I don't know why, but that's the reality. Uh, there's quite many national organizations, like ship owners or, or technology providers. Um, we at Baltic Ports, we, we have uh, prepared our own uh, policy paper, which is about promoting Baltic as a model region for green ports. But apart from that, I think there are lots of achievements on, on technology side. And I was just wondering uh, why not to try to, to get those providers together uh, and maybe uh, try to promote those achievements, uh, Baltic achievements, out of the Baltic. So I'm not sure if this is in line with the, uh, with the program of the Baltic Sea, but uh, that's... Uh, is what is I have in mind. An interesting idea that will definitely contribute to our discussion about involving the target groups, what was uh, actually mentioned in this very important topic uh, of our program also for the future. And I think with this very good concluding uh, words, we could uh, kind of uh, finalize the session. Jelena, would you? Yeah. Thank you, Marta. Yeah, we would like to finalize the session and we would like, first of all, to uh, thank our guests from both platforms and their big supporters, as we can see now. But this is only finalization of the session. The platform work uh, of these two uh, partnerships will continue the same way as for, for others. As explained yesterday, we are having six at the moment. But just tomorrow, there will be a couple more when the monitoring committee will take the decisions what are the best platforms to go on very soon. Yeah, so we will keep, keep on watching and attending your events and cooperating with you too. Thank you. Thank you very much.